Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazer Train, I'll continue adding to the scenario from episode 79, where we built an indexed DB repository that lets us access an indexed DB database on the local machine in a Blazor WebAssembly app. Last week in episode 80, we added a feature that would automatically sync the offline data to the server when we come back online. Today, I'll show you how to prevent data collisions when online. That is, if you and someone else are working on the same set of data, changes made by one of you can be propagated to the other, to in fact all others who are working on the same set of data. Not only that, but after making offline changes and then coming back online, those change messages will be sent to all the other users who can then choose what to do based on the action taken. In production, this sort of real-time syncing is a good job for a more powerful queued message broker, but I'll show you how to easily add Signal R to this project to make it happen in just a few lines of code. Using SignalR for real-time offline repository changes is coming up right now, right here, right your mama, right her father, right your brother, on Blazer Train. Blazer Train! All right, today we are continuing the saga of the indexed DB syncing, taking it to the next logical step, which is using a message broker so that when multiple users are online modifying data at the same time, if somebody is editing the same data as you, you want to know. Maybe you want to just get their updates. Uh, maybe you want to be a little more polite about it and say, hey, so-and-so is editing this set of records or something like that. So today we're going to take a nod from this episode of Blazor Train, episode 30, synchronizing data with Signal R that I did back in 2020. And we're going to apply that same code to this Blazor repository demo. Now, if you recall, this repository demo has three states of this project. Uh, we did this one first before we added index db and then last week we did before index db sync because we added the sync last week and now we're on this one here before signal r sync so that's what we're going to open up and we're going to start where we left off last week so this approach of syncing in real time when other users modify the data that you're looking at it can save time and minimize going back to the database to refresh all the data when you just want one or two records. So as I said, we're taking a nod from Blazor Train episode 30, and we're going to automatically sync CRUD actions from other users while online, and whenever we come back online from being offline. So in this demo, I'm going to use SignalR, but in production, I would use a more robust message broker like RabbitMQ and Service Bus or the myriad of Azure messaging products. Uh, and the reason is that with SignalR, you have to be online to catch that data. There's no caching, there's no queue. Whereas with something like RabbitMQ and Service Bus, those kinds of things, um, there is a queue and the queue exists outside of your process. And so when you come back online, it's very easy to just pull stuff out of the queue that was sent to you while you're offline. Whereas if you're offline with SignalR, yeah, you can sync, uh, but you're not going to get all those messages. So SignalR is good for this demo, but it's not as robust as other message brokers. So we're going to start here on the server app, and we're going to use a global using here. We're going to add this right to the top using Microsoft ASP.NET Core SignalR. Now, this isn't the client. This is the hosting side, the server side. So we don't need to add any packages. It's built into ASP.NET Core. So going down a bit, right here after add razor pages, we're going to add two statements. Add signal R and add response compression. Response compression 
makes things flow down the wire faster, makes everything faster. It's good. Use it. And if we're going to use compression, we have to go down here in the pipeline and right here on line 55 after use routing, we'll tell it to use response compression. Next, we're going to map a signal R hub that we haven't built yet, but we're going to call it data sync hub. So it's going to complain that data sync hub doesn't exist. But anyways, once it does exist, which is going to happen right now, this is the path to it. So let's add that hub, data sync hub, right to the server project. And this is perhaps the simplest signal R hub you'll ever see in your life. We have one method, sync record, passing in the table, the action, the ID. Now, if you're not using tables, you're using sets or some other kind of collection name, you can modify this, of course. All we want to be able to do is broadcast to everybody else that, hey, we have done an action to this particular set of data, and here's the primary key. All right? So that action for us is going to be insert, update, or delete. So when we call sync record after we've updated the database, this method is going to send a message to all the other clients called receive sync record, and it's going to pass the table, the action, and the ID. And then those clients can each individually take the appropriate action. All right, so let's focus on the client side now. We're going to add a package to the project, ASP.NET Core Signal R Client. There it is. Now you can go to NuGet and do that if you want. You know the drill. Let's add a global using for that to the program. Now we're also going to dispose an event that we're going to handle in the indexed DB sync repository file. That'll be fired whenever a data change message is received. So that way, whoever is using the repository doesn't also have to handle the signal R messages. Instead, they'll just have to handle an event. So to the services folder, we're going to add data changed event args. So this class is based on event args, right? Which you need to create custom events. And so it has a table property, an action property, and an ID property. And here's just a little helpful constructor in case you need it. So we're going to now make a few changes to indexed DB sync repository. So we are going to inject an HTTP client in here. If you look at the constructor, we have an HTTP client now. So let's look at our customer indexed DB sync repository. And you can see we've got everything but that HTTP client. So let's change that. And I just spread this out a little bit. So we're still basing it on indexed DB sync repository of customer. But all these things get injected to us, the iBlazor DB factory for accessing indexed DB, the customer repository that we're going to use, the JS runtime, and now the HTTP client. So we're passing all those things on to the base, which is IndexedDB Sync Repository. So let's look at what else we've changed here. So we've also added a data changed event. And here's the event handler with data change event args. That's going to be the arguments. Have that event. And if you go down in the constructor, the hub connection gets created from that HTTP client base address. And data sync hub's name of the hub. This base address ends with a slash. So this is the way that I'm handling the async code. Task.run async and then uh, an expression await async constructor. So this is a good way to do all your async constructory stuff in a separate method. All right, so this code is going to execute when some other user has inserted, updated, or deleted a record and then wants to broadcast that to everyone else. So here we're handling that receive sync record. And it's passing three strings, table, action, and ID. So now, how do we handle this? Well, we're only interested if the table matches our store name. If somebody's working on another table, this particular repository is going to ignore it. So if the action is insert, then an item was inserted. We're going to fetch it with our API repository. Now, is that online or offline? 
okay, well, think about this. Um, we're only getting this hub connection message if we're online. So we can assume we're online. So we fetch it with the API repository. And if the item is not null, we're going to add it to our local database. That's right. The offline database, indexed DB. You'll see. If the action was update, we're going to update the item in the local database. Same idea. If it was delete, we're going to delete an item in the local database. We're only dealing with the indexed DB. Same with delete all. Now here's the thing. We're going to leave it up to the application developer to figure out what to do with this stuff. So that's why we're going to raise the data changed event, but only after we've updated the local DB. Follow me? And now, this is still the async constructor, right? If we're online, we're going to start the hub. And you can handle that however you want, with retries or whatever. All right, so that's handling the changes that somebody else has made. How do we send those messages, and where do we send those messages? Well, let's just search for hub connection. Here we go. The first one is in delete all async. If we're online, we're going to delete all. Careful, I didn't tell you to do this. And then here's how we invoke that signal R method. Await hub connection invoke async sync record. Here's the store name, which is the table name. Here's the action delete all. And there's no ID for deleting all, is there? All right, the next one is in delete async. That was delete all async. This is delete async. After we do all the stuff that we need to do, we invoke sync record, store name, delete, and the online ID. Always the online ID. Delete by ID, same thing, except now we actually have the ID. And insert async after we do what we need to do, calling sync record with a store name, the insert action, and the ID. You're seeing a pattern here. With update, it's the same idea. After we've done everything we need to do, we call sync record with a store name, update, and ID. Now in sync local to server, this remember this happens after we come online. So after we've come online, after being offline, and we have an insert, we do the insert, and we have to send an insert message to everybody else at that point, too. Same with update. Right there. Same with delete. And same with delete all. All right, so that's it for the indexed DB sync repository. Now let's change sync demo razor to support the new features. So down in on initialized async, we are now handling the data changed event with this method on data changed. So this happens after SignalR has received a message that somebody's changed the data and the repository has actually fired this event to us. So we don't have to do the SignalR handling here. So here we only care about changes to the customer table. So if the table is customer, if the actions delete all, we're going to clear the customer's list. Insert, an item was added. We're going to go get it and add it to our customer's list. If an item was updated, we're going to get that by ID, get the local customer objects index, and then replace that in the customer's list. If it's delete, we're going to do the same thing, get the index, and then call remove at. And then we're going to invoke status changed. So to test this, we're going to run it in two different browsers. Okay, for each of these, we'll go to the offline sync demo. And uh, I'm just going to reset all the data over here. Now watch this data over here. Do you see that? So after resetting, this guy got reset. So I'm going to update Isadora. Isadora got updated here. Going to delete Rocky. I'm going to delete Hugh. Right? 
Let's add a customer. There you go. Let's reset over here. Everything gets reset. Now on this guy, I'll go offline. All right, so I'm offline now. And here I will update Isadora. I will delete Rocky. I will delete Hugh. And now I'll add a customer. And now let's bring this back. We'll go online and watch what happens over here. Boom. There you see it. And the IDs are correct and everything. Now look, it's just a demo. I'm not suggesting that you take all your tables, duplicate them uh, in IndexedDB, and take all of your raw data uh, entities and ship them down to the local browser. I'm not suggesting that. But I'm giving you a framework to take sets of data that you're working with Keep them synchronized offline. When you come back online, reconnect to the database and resync. And then when you are online, you can be in sync with everybody else. Or you can at least notify your user that, hey, you know what? So-and-so is editing this data. You might want to talk to them. Or so-and-so has changed this record. Do you want to accept the change, etc.? So have fun with it. And of course, let me know what your suggestions are. Send email to carl at appfenex.com. Leave a message on the YouTube video. Now back to you in the studio, Carl. Once more, I need to stress that this is a demo, not a product. It's up to you to decide whether this is a good approach and then how to modify it to fit your application. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Place a train.